Um, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Duck Lake, which is a uh, innovation project um, that came out of our uh, DE cell. Um, yeah, the, it's about uh, a journey to integrate DuckDB with the governance uh, capabilities of Unity Catalog. And Diederik is going to walk you through um, yeah, the need for, for Duck Lake. And um, with that, I'm going to commence. Dan Haas, thank you. Uh, um, yeah, so by raise of hands, so how many people already know this story, like big data that you've probably heard it before? It's not how even less than half that was surprising. Okay, then I will actually tell you this because I want to skip this slide. Uh, no, yeah, so big data is dead, right? So what does that, what does that actually mean? So what we saw over the last 10, maybe even 15 years, right? That a lot of companies built relatively complex data infrastructure, right? So think, think Hadoop, think Spark, think uh, distributed clusters, which can process a lot of data. Right, so if you were talking to someone like five years ago, they and and they would say, you know, data is the, data is the new oil. Uh, uh, you need to store all, all data. You need to have a lot of processing power because data will drive most companies. Uh, as it turns out, this tends to be not necessarily true. Right, so what they to solve, for example, within Google, within uh, with, with within BigQuery, is that most of their clients. They were they were queries which are smaller than smaller than ten gigabytes, and also there's even you know a larger uh, group. Eh? So of until the ninety percent though, it's so, so it's around one hundred megabytes. So within the BigQuery team and within Google, they said, well, that's you know too bad because they they built this very scalable, very powerful data warehouse, but most of their clients do not actually use that power. Because they don't need it. I think there are multiple reasons for why that uh, why it is, and I can show you that in the that in the next slide. But at the same time, uh, yeah, we can already go further. Yeah. We can also go back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, we are basically dot pb, right? And where we saw this, we have those all those distributed clusters, huh? all that complex data infrastructure for processing a lot of data. We also have DuckDB, it tries to simplify it. It says, you know what? We just run everything again on a single machine over maybe, you know, multiple processes, but within a single machine. And 15 years ago, we couldn't do that, right? Because I think the size of the VM, about 20 years ago, the size of a VM here in an AWS, the, 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 the amount of memory that you could get was around two gigabytes max. Now, if I'm in Google or in Azure and, and I want to get a machine with 500 gigabytes or maybe even a terabyte in memory, that is manageable. That is doable. Also, your local laptop. Nowadays, if you're a little bit of a powerful developer, you probably have 32 gigabytes or 64 or maybe 128 gigabytes of memory. And you have quite a lot of cores. So, where before we had systems which, uh, which we need to run over multiple VMs to make scalable, we now already have so much power within a single machine that needing those complex systems is just not necessary anymore. Especially taking into consideration that most companies out there, they don't need to, need to win those queries which are, you know, 500 gigabytes, a few terabytes large. Most of the queries that you're running are just 100 megabytes up until 10 gigs. And it kind of from an, from an analytics standpoint also makes sense because most of the, an, most of the analytics that you're doing is not really about what did we do 10 years ago, it's more about what did we do last week or yesterday or a month ago, right? So I can have data, you know, over the last 10 or 20 years, but most of the data that I query is generally a lot younger, let's say, and a little small. Now, and that's basically, you know, if you look in the big data that uh, story and, and, and look at the key takeaways, you, see, you indeed see that most companies do not have big data out there. And I know that there are people here from, from Booking. That's a different story, right? But, um, for example, if you go to the average retailing company, right, you're not really talking about big data. Uh, if you go to, uh, let's say, whatever type of companies we, we, we work for, I think at 80%, we tend to spin up some type of distributed, you know, uh, data processing system. 
B, 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 manage fix, snowflake fix, big query fix. I think data bricks, but most of them could get away with something a lot smaller. And that is where Dr. B comes, uh, comes in. Uh, I need, like I said, the most of those are, are, are smaller than we originally uh, uh, expected, but also the big data frontier is, is shrinking, right? So we have machines which become a lot larger, right? And that's the reason why we do not need to run any distributed process system anymore or the overhead connected with that. Storage is a different story, right? But the processing part, you should be able to do on a, to do on a single machine. And just to feed that last thought a little bit, if you look at you know, what people do with it, within machine learning, most people, when, when they train a machine learning model, they still do it on a single machine. Right? And they also generally tend to do some, some pre-processing there. And this is exactly the same example, but in this case, we're talking about you know, uh, analytics, data transformations. However, where do we need to move to it? So if you look at what Uxiva does is that whenever we set up a data platform, we had multiple pages in there, you can get some type of, some type of a gesture stack, you have a page like you store your data and you, and you transform your data, you know, and you have some type of consuming data, right? It's the most simplified thing that's what you click it on. And right around the place where you generally have some type of simple system, big node net, big, 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 big data bricks, this is where Dr. B or Polydoc would be at drop in. Effect. And that's very what the move to is. Right? That, and even nice, I would say, is that if you have a company that already runs Databricks or, or, or that already uses Snowflake, generally, well, it can become quite, quite, uh, and quite expensive. Why not run 95% of your smaller creeks on top of something like Duckbeat? And that the 5%, the very nice periods, still push towards your distributed system. If you have it already, it makes sure, you know, it makes your infrastructure less complex, easier to, 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 to manage, but above all, also more, more, more affordable, basically. Now, in order to do that, so how can we get there? And probably you have heard the terms like data catalog, or data cataloging data and, and, and data components a lot the last few years, if not, that you're probably not from the data domain, but uh, yeah, uh, but indeed, what uh, what we see a lot of companies doing is setting up data catalogs, think, uh, think, think Unity for an example, uh, which should make it relatively easy to discover and get access to data within with, within your organization. So so we still have a lot of organizations where you know data is scattered, right? So you want to have a single swim set to place where I can find where my data is stored and who has access to, 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 to it. And that will be called part of my, 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 my integration link. So what if we can combine DuckDB with such a data cat? Because that would mean that if, if, if we can connect it to, it will be very easy when you're using DuckDB to just say, load in this uh, table, do my transformation and push it back again. And this is, yeah, this is a functionality which currently is not in DuckDB yet. And that is why we're introducing DuckLab. And so, we, so the, the, the idea would be that we have token needs and we basically integrate it with, with, with unit cat. So unit catalog is a technical data catalog where you basically store access to, to, to data, but also the place where, you, where your data is stored. So whenever I have this combination and from DuckDB, I can just, to whatever you, uh, to whatever catalog I am uh, connected, I can just query like, I want to load in these tables and they can load in the stack, but you, you can do the transformations and you can basically push them back again. So from an integration standpoint, this makes it a lot easier, but also it makes product way more mature, right? Because you're able to integrate with an existing stack. And that is what DuckLay is. So let's see if we can combine DuckPB with, uh, yeah, effectively with Unity Catalog. So I am doing the introduction. Oak is actually the powerhouse behind yeah. the story. So I'm going to uh, go over to Fuck. Yes. So. We now, oh, we now decided, okay, we want to integrate uh, DuckDB with Unity Catalog. So first, before we start building, we need to define some requirements, right? So um, we want to meet it, we want, we want it to meet requirements of a modern data lake house. So 
We want to have access control. We want to have support for asset transactions to ensure the data is complete, correct, and conflict-free. We want to have read and write integration with a open data format like Delta Lake. Uh, we want to have a notebook interface because we have we, we want to use we want to have analyst use or data platform. So we need to have a good uh, user interface. Of course, we want to have storage decoupled from compute. And in our use case, we want to have full DBT integration uh, to schedule or SQL uh, workloads. So here you can see the data catalog. We, we are using uh, open source Unity catalog. We're using DigDB as the engine. We're using uh, Jupyter as our uh, front end, essentially. And then we have uh, Delta Lake as our uh, open data format. So this wasn't as easy as uh, I just showed. So we had some challenges. Um, most more specifically, we looked at these extensions. So there is a DuckDB Unity extension, which is great, but it wasn't complete. So the current uh, extension, it does not uh, support all CRUD uh, operations. So table creates or schema creates. Um, again, we also uh, wanted to use the DuckDB Delta extension, which is available, but that one is also limited. So it's using, it's leveraging the Delta kernel RS. And for those who you don't know, the Delta kernel is a initiative by uh, Delta to basically create a, yeah, uh, a set of libraries for, um, for Delta so that multiple, that other query engines can easily, you know, create connectors to Delta. Uh, so, Duck and DuckDB, in this sense, is written in C++. And there are two flavors, so there's a, a Java Delta kernel and a Rust uh, Delta kernel, and the Rust one has C and C++ bindings. Um, so, DuckDB is using uh, that, uh, that specific kernel to build the Delta connector, and that one specifically only supports reads and blind uh, appends. So, um, yeah, it doesn't meet the requirements, so we needed to create a workaround so we created our own plugin so there is this dbt DuckDB adapter which allows you to um, use dbt while also leveraging DuckDB. Um, it's an open source project you can just um, go to their github and also create a custom plugin so you can really control how data is being written to uh, your catalog of choice and also also being read, read from so in our case, uh, I will explain, I'll walk you through the, uh, the flow. So in dbt, a dbt build will first build a dependency graph, right, of all your uh, models. Um, then it will compile these dbt models into executable uh, SQL. From this SQL, we run the SQL against DuckDB. A result, the result is a pi error table. And this pi error table, we can uh, infer its schema use get its schema convert it to a unity catalog um uh, uh, unity catalog schema use the unity catalog python sdk to actually you know um inform our unity catalog hey create this schema create this table with this schema and um after that we're using this prior table to write it to a delta table if for you know if we're writing to aws we would also need to retrieve the temporary credentials to actually, you know, get the access key to actually write to this uh, location. Um, so that's our workaround. And now we're going to see it in action. So to see Duck Lake in action, we first need some data, right? So, and we're using DBT. So the typical example we should use is the Jeffel Shop. So the Jeffel Shop is a fictional e-commerce store. Uh, you can see our data uh, right there, our data models right there. Customers, uh, orders, and payments. Um, these are three uh, seeds, as, they, as you call them in DBT. So these are CSV files we first upload to our data warehouse. And from there, we're transforming them to um, MART level tables. So our MART level tables are customers and orders. Within the intermediate layer, we're doing performing some transformations, some joins. Uh, this, these are views essentially, but the materialized tables are the customers and orders, and these are the ones that we will focus on uh, in this uh, demo. So 
as I explained, just to recap, we're doing a DBT build. So first we're building the dependency graph. We're compiling uh, our DBT models into executable SQL against DuckDB, convert the results to a priority table, and then create the uh, unit to catalog resources to show the schema, the table. Um, and at the end, we're writing the table to the uh, storage location as a Delta table. And to prove that it works, we want to check, right, if our Unity Catalog is populated uh, correctly. So first, we're using the DuckDB Unity Catalog extension to attach Unity to DuckDB so that we can query our tables. Now, you can see we're doing a show all tables uh, uh, statement. And you can see right there, we have a customer's uh, uh, table and an orders table. These are the default ones you get when you uh, start a new instance of uh, Unity Catalog. And at the end, we're of course querying the table to show that the data is queryable, uh, the schema is correct, and uh, yeah, it showed that it works. So um, I think these are this is basically our demo, and we also have some next steps. So as you can see, this is already a nice UI. We could extend upon that. Uh, a colleague of ours created a Unity extensions to easily query your Unity catalog resources right there. We also created a custom kernel, so a donkey kernel, which already bootstraps your, um, uh, your environment so that you don't have to do a lot of uh, uh, replicative uh, stuff. Uh, but of course, in terms of UI, you can easily yeah, see it you know, uh, even in, more, in a more advanced way. The next steps, so we didn't include role-based access control, which is one of our requirements. It has been released in Unity Catalog uh, 0. Uh, 0.20. Uh, we want to support schema as evolution. So Delta Lake, of course, natively supports schema evolution, but we would also need to update our Unity Catalog uh, tables to make that work. Uh, we want to deploy Duck Lake in the cloud. So this setup was solely just on, on local machines using Docker. Um, we want to improve the UI. Uh, we, we want to really focus on the analyst, right? This is a, a really, like Diderik uh, uh, said, uh, it can really fill a gap in the modern data landscape. It's not going to necessarily replace uh, a Databricks or a Snowflake, but there are a lot of use cases where this would really fit uh, the gap. Uh, we would also like to make it pluggable. So in our case, we're using Unity Catalog, we're using DuckDB as the engine. But we can also envision a future where you can pick your own engine, your own catalog. And uh, lastly, we, yeah, we'd like to do more talks like these and uh, blogs about our uh, journey. And um, for those who haven't read the blog yet, we have a uh, QR code. So if you're interested, uh, we go a little bit more in detail in this blog. Uh, there's also links to the code repository so you can easily replicate this setup yourself and uh, yeah, even extend upon it. So yeah, that was it. That was our pres presentation.